you guys have problems getting in this morning? A little bit. It says your JV host has another meeting going on and it spins for a while. Yeah, it was weird. So what I did is actually I had to log in to that server and then close down the meeting. There, I don't know what happened. That was weird. Yeah. Very strange. I said, I said a good act of contrition and three Our Fathers and two Hail Marys and I got in. <laughs> Dick, you were, you were the catalyst for the change on that one, my good sir. Good morning, Tucson. Yes. That's a great background, Dick. I like that. Hey, hey, also, I like your interview that you did the other day with the, uh, the open house. Right. Yeah. Hey, I got news for you. There's a few, this is on the QT, there's a few openings on that open house show, and it is a fantastic way of getting listings because my favorite closing line is, can your other realtor put your house on TV? And really, it's been just marvelous. So if you're interested, let me know, all right? Yes, sir. I've never actually seen the open house show because it was a TV thing. It, it's great because it's not just looking at houses. It has comedy and other things. And uh, of course, this Saturday, this, this Sunday, they're going to run that to run that video interview of me and uh you know being a shameless self-promoter that that video is going to go nationwide robin you look beautiful this morning <laughs> well thank you well you please should give us the details so we can watch sunday yes well you know a star is born a humble humble star is born <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see that there's some levity already out in the world. Good morning, Dick Nichols. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Larry. And of course, Jason, as always, thank you so much for being a part of this day. It how, are, how are your weeks? Larry, the house guy is here now because what, at, you know, always what you focus on expands. Yes, sir. I've gained 10 pounds since I've seen that sign. It's okay. I focus on you, Dick. <laughs> That's why you're expanding. <laughs> Good morning, Cindy. All right, let's 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 jump right back into our weeks. What are we working on? What are we struggling with? What can I help you with specifically at this very second? So I'm curious your thoughts on that house that I put the offer in and we went 5,000 over, but it actually, the offer that won was 20,000 over. Oh, cow. I would, I would have a conversation with the listing agent and ask him, you know, what, what, in the event that this doesn't appraise, what's the game plan? And she said that she has had that conversation with her seller and that they are going to have to come down if they need to, but the seller's just all about trying to net as much as they possibly can. Right. And that's the thing is it's that it's setting up failure and for an agent to put an offer in for 20 over, I get it trying to win the offer, but that's, it's just stupid setting up failure like that. It's like, this is not going to appraise at all close to that number just because it looks good on paper and the sellers get excited about it. That's a weak agent. Okay, because it makes me nervous for tomorrow night where I'm showing one that's 199 and I'm thinking, does that mean we would have to offer 220? Right. I mean, if, if the comps hold strong for it, I would say, no, let's, let's play with it. That's where you're at. You know, go up, go up to where you get it one. But the problem is, is it's, the buyers are on the hook for everything. They've paid for the inspections, they've paid for the appraisal, and they've put time and energy into it. And a seller, all they've done is put their house on the market and accepted an offer well above market. Now, you have to have conversations with buyers and say, listen, this is the chance that the sellers may think that this is the number and not come off of it. And you are out the inspections, you're out the appraisal, you're out the time. But at the same time, the seller is taking a risk too because you're taking a house off the market for a period of time. And if it doesn't appraise, that appraisal is out there. 
Yeah, now, now it's stuck. If it's an FHA, it's six months stuck. Yeah. So oftentimes people don't realize that on the listing side, they're like, oh, well, it's an FHA appraisal. I'll just cancel it and get another. No, that appraisal sticks to the house for six months. Yeah. Not that VA will ever admit it, but I'm sure VA looks into that system and sees what the FHA appraisal was too. So it's it's a it's a tough tough situation to get into because we have to have the shock value and the number up front but it's having a conversation with the listing agent before we put an offer in and say hey i know you're expecting a lot of offers and they're going to be over list i'm sure there's a lot of hungry buyers out there what's the game plan well there are some uh agents out there who are telling their buyers go for the moon and if it doesn't appraise, it doesn't appraise. Well, we can, we can negotiate from that point on. And that's not really a very uh, ethical way of doing business. You're 100% you're correct, Dick. It's not ethical at all because that's not a negotiation. A negotiation is good when you have the, the other party has a dead stop. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have to do anything. They can just cancel the contract. It's all on you. I like the way you you combine the words ethical and dick in the same sentence. I don't hear that very often, but I like it. Things are changing, Dick. Things are changing. Well, I'm glad they pulled away from her kitchen table. She's got an office space now. That's awesome. So yeah, that's that's a good point, Robin. Thank you for bringing it up. That as you guys are coming around that situation more and more, it's just. It's important to open the lines of communication with all parties, set expectations. I happen to be a part of this deal with Robin, so I'm in that conversation. And the buyers are like, this is bullshit. And that's the sentiment. And I'm sure that's multiple people out there is the sentiment. Like I just put a house on the market that's in that same price range in that same neighborhood that's probably going to get multiple offers this weekend. And I already told my sellers we're going to get multiple offers. Ultimately, it's the appraisal that keeps the market in check. So I don't want you to get what I call seller's greed and see that we're getting all these high end offers. I want you to be realistic and let's look at an offer that's going to be the most advantageous for you. That sounds like the conversation that the seller on Robin's deal should have had with their agent. Right. It didn't. So that's the problem is that these agents out there, they're, they're picking up listings. And I hate to say is I'm seeing a lot of listings still hit the market quickly with less than I don't want to say qualified, less than good agents. Agents I've done deals with that I know are not very skilled in their craft. They just get a listing and then there's going to be multiple offers and out there and it's, it's a crap shoot. But having those conversations as a Keller Williams agent, I want you to be highly skilled and being able to have these rough conversations with people and say, listen, this is the conference. We can say that this house sold back four months ago and the market's gone up 3% since then. This is where we can justify the value range at. There's no way in hell your house is $50,000 more valuable than the house that sold four months ago. That's the exact same. Well, you know, and I'll tell you something. I do not, the comps aren't always right now because the market is really screwy. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing people saying to me that they are now really afraid of what happens after the election. And they're, I think we're going to see for the next two or three weeks, more and more people saying, I don't want to do anything until I find out what happens with the election. And that's not a political statement. That's a concern people have. That's what the market does on the, on the stock market as well. There, there's a lot of inconsistencies out there. Uh, but I've seen I've seen prices just zoom up on houses, and they're getting it. And so you have to you have to really um, do a fine tune you know f fine tune diagnosis of it. And uh, but talk to the other agent. The other agent is the person you've got to negotiate with. You got yeah you got to make a friend. And that's. That's the best advice that Dick could say is you have to look in, you have to scrutinize the market and let's, let's really dig into 
not only your comparables, but let's look at trends. Let's look at what's happening in the market. Rates went down again, or 265. It's insane. You have, you have people all across the country leaving New York and California, and they're coming here, and they got lots of cash. And they are, you know, I, I love it because they're making the value of the Tucson market much higher. But they're coming in. And, uh, yeah, you know, so we're, we're not, you know, you can't just look at Tucson market. You got to look at the trend nationally, what's happening out there. So who, anyone else ran into what Dick was saying, the political side of it is I want to see what happens after the elections. I want to wait and see what happens. Anyone come across that yet? I haven't had anyone say that yet. Yeah. You're, you're working with a lot of buyers right now, Renee. What are their sentiments on these high offer bid outs? Um, I actually don't have, most of my buyers are under contract already. So I don't, I only have two that are, well, two that are very active um, that aren't under contract and their price ranges are just so low that it's just, they're, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing popping up for what they can afford right now. I think for my clients, because they're looking for a four two and a two, you know, under two fifty, that's not easy to do. Um, and they they want a newer home, not necessarily an older home. I mean, they they like the mid century modern look. However, when they walk into it, they're like, oh, you know, if it's not re completely redone like a new home, it's not something they're looking for. Well, that is why new home sales is really increasing every month. You got it. And I just found out lumber went up again. So just FYI on the new construction. So, you know, I, I put a, I, I'm seeing more and more physicals hit the market also. I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, I'm getting daily at least five or six physicals that hit the market. And that's a, that's a increase tremendously over the last, last few months. Well, it's because a hot market, Every, every, every agent's good, including a, a real, mm -hmm. Bless you. including a homeowner because they feel like they can just Google their way through this transaction. And that's, I'm seeing wholesalers pick up. I'm seeing like everything in, in, in our community is fighting against us right now. I've seen more Facebook ads lately for um, Open Door, OfferPad, Redfin, than I ever have. And I want, this is the conversation you can utilize for that is when you're, when you're dealing with a client that is thinking about, you know, I'm just going to sell my house on open door. Mm -hmm. Tell them, okay, great. Open door is a, is a good program to help people sell their house quickly. We have Keller offers. that does the exact same thing, but let me ask you during COVID where that hit, what happened to offer pad open door and all those I buyers? And they're probably gonna say, well, I don't know. They disappeared because the stockholders of those companies got fearful and pulled back. So those companies shut down. Mm -hmm. The Keller Williams agent never stopped. Why would you trust your largest financial decisions with a company that has the purse strings being held by people with fear? I don't know if you guys realize that, but all of those eye buyers kind of died out during COVID. They're starting to come back now because they're like, ooh, the market's super hot. We've known it's super hot. For the last six months, we have been in the fight. We have been in the trenches. We have known what is there, right? Mm -hmm. Someone else give me something. How, how would you handle that? Well, I'm just going to sell my house with open door. Um, that was one thing they talked about in Mega Camp was learn about all those companies. Um they're salary based they're not commission based so whether they sell a two million dollar home or a two hundred thousand dollar home they're most likely getting the same commission off of it because they don't make commission so there's less and what's the word i'm looking for there's less enthusiasm from them to sell your home because they're making the same no matter what well you know i tell you that that's where it gives us a, a really competitive edge being with with Keller offers if you have if you've registered with Keller offers you've got that arrow in your quiver as far as marketing opportunities 
So now you can approach that person who wants to list their home and say, I can give you the best of both worlds. I can give you what, if we work it on the market and we do the proper marketing, what it may be worth. But if you really want to, if you really want to just get rid of it, I can take care of that too. Why not give yourself both options? That's a, that's a pretty strong sales point. There are a ton of trainings for Keller Offers in October, too. Mm -hmm. I'm taking mine next week. It's a great, a great tool to have in your quiver. It's a great arrow to be able to shoot out there because you can have that, that conversation. I know a lot of you on this call focus on a lot of buyers because it's easier to start with, but I really want your mindset to be comfortable around a listing, too. Listings are where it came from. Nicole, your first deal in real estate was a listing, and that's fantastic. That's yeah. just starting precedent going forward. Yeah, I also want to point out that, like, looking at, like, the iBuyers and stuff, it's kind of important to show them the all the fees that they're going to pay because when you actually, like, set them right next to each other, the iBuyers, they end up paying about 13% as compared to paying the 6% commission. So if they already have an issue with paying the 6% commission, if you put that next to the 13% that they're going to lose – on the iBuyer, they're more likely to lean towards using an actual person instead of an iBuyer. Most of them don't realize it because it's not listed as a commission. It's listed as like a different type of fee and they don't realize that it's the same thing. And that's, you know, that's for repairs because, too. Because there's a famous uh, closing technique called the either or close. You can, you can uh, go against and say why you don't want to do an iBuyer type of deal because they're gonna, they're gonna lose a lot of money. But if you have the quiver, the, letter, the arrow in your quiver, which is Keller Offers, and you can do both, now your question is, which way do you wanna go? Do you wanna go with me on let me market in your house and sell it normally? Or do you want me to meet the need of what everybody else is offering and I buyer? We can do that as well. Which, which way do you want to go? It's not, do you want to use me or not? It's which way you want to go. It's a very strong closing yeah. question. And which way are you going to go? Yeah. What, one thing I like to add, how Keller Offers is different than the other ones is with Keller Offers, you can... Uh, at least tell them that, and I will be your agent walking you through it every step of the way versus you're going to be doing the work with all the other uh, open door and the different agencies. So at least you can help sell yourself that way and say, I will be there with you. It's, it's a different experience, even if you want to go through the I buying. Yeah. And I do have to say with open door, it's like impossible to talk to a real person without going through an automated system first. Um, I have one that has failed a VA appraisal twice now, and I have to go back out there today because according to Open Door, the repairs were fixed, and um, we got an email last night from VA appraisal that it is not fixed. So um, they don't necessarily have on-site people to do anything for you. They just hire out contractors and assume that it gets done right. That's good information. If they had an agent, you know, they would, they would follow up on all that. So that, yeah, that's I know. And like I said, I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to go out there after this because she tells us it's done. The VA appraiser went out there yesterday or Monday and said, it's not done. So it's like, did they, they half-assed it the first time they did half of the wall and not the other half of the wall, like cracks on the outside. And so it's like, what did they miss this time? <laughs> like, it was pretty obvious what needed to be done. So you know, again, using the Keller open doors as well as, you know, our natural way of listening, you want to keep yourself busy all the time with as many prospects coming into your funnel. So if you expand your ability to meet your client's needs, you're automatically going to expand the number of prospects or clients that you can do business with. And listings is really important because you get a lot of buyers from that. And so our, our, our job, our really number one goal is to expand 
to who we can do business with and keep that funnel filled with, with, uh, with, uh, with possible prospects. Prospecting, 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 you're in it. You got it, buddy. You, you, I... So here, who wants to do a Facebook post and start getting some prospects off of these potentials? Right? I tried that, but I was, I'm not successful. Yet. Numbers don't lie. Do a video standing next to a computer. If you can find an old school, like the, the, the white representation of the, you know, cathode ray monitor and the white tower, if you can do that, do a video and say, hey, are you thinking about selling your house with one of those, uh, we call them robot buyers? Well, hi, my name is Amber. I'm with Color in Southern Arizona. And let me show you the big difference between selecting an agent like myself or one of these. And then ask, hey, you've got a call at three o'clock in the morning. You need, you need something answered right away. You can give me a call. Can you do that? And then you just point at the computer and it's not going to say anything. That's what I thought. Yeah, and Zillow's opening their brokerage, whatever you want to call it here. I don't know when that starts, but. We're at the best um, market for that too. We need definitely. to flush them out. Yeah, I know. Um, and so if you are working with buyers, definitely make sure you have them set up with Flex MLS and let them know that flat, like what you're giving them access to is the most updated information. Because I have buyers that are coming down. You, we lost you. And I said, huh? We, lo we lost you after we have buyers coming in. Oh, I have buyers coming in in like two weeks. And I send them stuff from Flex MLS and then they still will be like, well, that one says it's sold on Zillow. And it's like, I'm sending you these because it's the most updated. Zillow doesn't always have the most accurate status. Oh, the frustration, Renee. I'm there with you on that one. I know. I'm like, I sent it to you on Flex MLS because that's the MLS. And okay. <laughs> I have the opposite. Hello. I have the opposite. They're saying, oh, it's available. And I'm like, no, it's definitely pending. They should be closing probably within the next week. Oh, oh, my your, app, your Keller Williams app updates with the MLS much faster than Zillow. So that's another option. And it's branded to you. <laughs> I have not had good luck with the Keller Williams app. Everyone says it shuts down and their open houses don't automatically default to say like 7 to 11 a.m. or something, every single one of them. Um, and I had too many people that had the app shut down. So I stopped giving it out until they get Keller app figured out. <laughs> when was the last time you played with it? Uh, last week and it shut down on me too. Okay. So... <laughs> I don't, I just, I don't know. I, I haven't had that experience at all. So that's it's why a I'm great thinking. idea, but if it's shutting down on me and I've had clients say it's shutting down, it's like, I, I'm not going to continue to advertise that over flex when you actually get more information from flex. I, Keller has it. Keller, it's sorted out in a nicer way for Keller, but you still get more if you look at it on flex in the last. So Well, give her a shot, play with it more. That's something there. But you definitely want to say, give grace for that technology there. You guys all know my favorite thing about the accuracy of Zillow, right? What's the line? The A in Zillow stands for accurate. <laughs> there is no A. Your clients will laugh too. You know what? I love Zillow. The A in Zillow is for accurate. And they're like, ha. Ah. That's dumb, but they're, they'll realize that you're saying it. Because Zillow, Zillow, even on their website, be comfortable with looking at the bottom of the website with the estimates. This is just an estimate. Please consult a real estate professional for a market-specific quote. So, and I would tell people they're bringing in a brokerage. You know, Zillow is bringing in a brokerage because what they're trying to do is they're trying to hedge out real estate agents. They're trying to create a tech-driven industry that's gonna cut back on the fiduciary responsibility of a person and make you functionary. Why would you choose me over Zillow? I'm glad that you'd ask me that. Zillow has been a machine that has been out there trying to collect data for decades. All they're trying to do is 
digitize real estate and cut out the fiduciary aspect of a human being. I don't care how advanced a computer gets, they cannot think with emotion. Utilizing my abilities, my skill sets and our connection is I can help guide you through this process. So it's looking out for your best interests, not that of a large corporation. Another competition I noticed, I got an email, uh, is Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. They're now having their own team of re realtors. I saw that. I haven't looked into it though. This isn't the first time these people have tried this, guys. This is, this is multiple attempts to bring in that. And it's opportunity, we, we can go on the same lines, you know, COVID proved that these tech giants don't have a place in real estate because when the market shifts, so do their interests. It's never about the person. It's always about the pay. Well, one thing, speaking from personal experience, because um, I had used Quicken Loans before, uh, Keller Mortgage, when I did my refinance, saved me quite a few thousands of dollars over Quicken Loans. So that is one thing we can say is, yeah, they may have a great, you know, program, everything's online, but I do know that, you know, Color Mortgage can really stack up against them quite nicely. If you get the right, <laughs> the lending officer. <laughs> Oof. So I talked to a lender last night, I went to lunch with Steve, well, last night, yesterday, and everything is kind of changing and everything's closing late and delaying and all these things. So I want to just reiterate for you guys, communicate with your lending officers, communicate with the teams, make sure everything is out in the open. If you're going to miss closing by a day or two, let's talk about it a week before it happens. I'm sure your lender knows if they don't know, you need to push them. Yeah. My, uh, the deal that just uh, closed, I, I was on the uh, sell side, fortunately, but the deal that just closed, um, yesterday actually, um, which was supposed to close last Thursday, the lender had 12 days between the appraisal being uh, uh, submitted to them to get docs out and they missed it. And they missed it so badly that they ended up putting the buyer, their client in a hotel for the weekend because they were supposed to close on Thursday. Then they were said they would make it happen on Friday they still didn't get the docs to the title company. It rolled over to Monday, and uh, you know they 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 the this buyer had had a truck rented, had it moved you know got themselves moved out of where they were living, and literally had the, the lender had to pay for a hotel, the truck to sit full of furniture, all that stuff until Monday afternoon, um, and that's what that's how far they had to go because they, they were that far behind, but they, they had to take care of their client at that level. I had never heard that before, where a lender was paying to put a client in a hotel room for a weekend. That's a good lender. Good lender, but they had 12 days to get this thing done. Well, that needs a buck, but he paid, he paid for it, that's important. I haven't had any issues with the lending side. Good. Keep it up. It's all about how we handle transactions from start and jump street. But I want you to start thinking about prospecting. How do we generate leads from these, these shifts and moves in the market? Don't look, oh, God, another change. Oh, God, they're going to take our business away. I want you to say, how can I pivot? That's the scripting for yourself. How can I pivot this in my favor? You are the person, they are the enemy. If a real estate agent steps up and says, hey, I'm a real person, and then this is a computer. Well, you know, back in 2010, when the, the whole real estate market went down, down the tubes, we had a lot of people quit. I mean, a lot of realtors quit. The ones who successfully stayed in it and made money were the ones who worked harder. They raised their game up. They kept calling everybody they could possibly think of. They did everything they possibly could to get as many prospects. They, they knew their scripts and they worked it. So 
if you want to increase your business right now, especially in a time of turmoil, just keep working at it and making calls, calling up people, do your two to three hours a day of, you know, lead generation and you will, you will survive and you will succeed to see another day. I've got two footnotes on the whole Zillow thing too. First of all, what Dan said, that's what we as agents need to start doing. And when someone starts talking about, oh, the Zestimate says, yes, did you read below the Zestimate? Cons, you know, this is an estimate, consult a real estate agent. That's why you're speaking with me. And here's the next thing I'll tell you about Zillow. They can't see inside your house. They don't know if you upgraded the kitchen. They don't know if you put new carpet in. They don't know if anything that you've done inside the home, it's all based on square footage and averages in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Lastly, the Zestimate is an aggregate of the entire zip code you live in. So if there's a trailer park down the street, that's averaging into your value, the Zestimate says about your house. Or if there's a couple million dollar homes down the street, that's averaging into what Zestimate is telling you your averages. So by taking those two or three extra steps and setting Zillow aside as the big corporation, I'm here to speaking with you as a human being and I'll be available to you every time you want to pick up the phone as opposed to anybody at Zillow, and then, you know, of course, the A in Zillow is for accurate. You know, if I can just add on what Larry just said there. When I was I gotta back, make I got to close the room down. Oh, this is really important. I know, but they, they needed to set up for the meeting. Oh, okay. So hold it for tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the morning at 9 a.m. All Partners meeting, special guest speaker today. So jump on. If you're having a problem getting logged in, the password's probably 1KWSA, like always, all caps. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for engaging. Ellen, I'm sorry, but we're at the shutdown. We'll see you guys later.